Awesome. <sighs> so happy Friday afternoon, everybody. Find a comfortable seat unless you want to start lying down. <sighs> so we had been talking a lot about <clears throat> patterns in our minds, patterns in our reactions to things. And it's interesting because I, I was ready to kind of conclude that talk over the several days. And then this morning, uh, this video popped up on my feed on YouTube, the futility of egoic reaction and navigating our awakening by Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle is the wonderful mindfulness teacher and author of one of his most famous books is The Power of Now. And he talked about in this video how we can misidentify ourselves with this entity in our minds that is the result of patterns, inherited patterns. On the, in the East, they call it karma, which conditions us to react a certain way. For example, you email someone and they don't answer for a day, a two days, three days, and the mind starts to create these defensive stories. Oh, this person doesn't like me, they're ignoring me, or whatever it is. And then as the days pass and perhaps another email is sent to try to follow up, still no response and the storyline becomes even more dramatic the wheels continue to turn created by this entity called the ego <laughs> this may or may not be relevant of an example for you but there are many things that other people can perceive as neutral situations or stimuli somebody says something it rubs you the wrong way and we have certain patterns that can be triggered then the reactivity can tumult into just an endless loop. And it's the ego feeding itself, according to Eckhart Tolle in this talk, because it wants to protect its identity, proliferates it by continuous storylines. And he urges us in our quest for awakening to take a step back and create space and remember that we are the consciousness and not the mind. We are the consciousness that has the ability to observe the reactivity of the mind when that happens. And then help to loosen the grip. Realizing that many times our own suffering can be self-created by this ego entity when we identify with it as we talked about in one of the roots of suffering or kleshas in yoga philosophy. Bring us back to the definition of yoga in the Yoga Sutras. That is, is the calming of the fluctuations of the mind. The calming of the fluctuations in the mind. It acknowledges that the mind is continuously vacillating or creating patterns. And when we can calm all of that, then we can connect to the ultimate goal of yoga, our true selves, alignment with our true selves, that who is the seer, the observer of the body, the observer of the mind. And through that, we can align with each other in the state of oneness. So anyway, <laughs> just thought that video popped up for a reason, even though I thought we were done talking about some scars, but I guess there was just a little bit more to share. So I invite you in the practice today to cultivate that space of awareness, awareness of our thoughts, especially as we eventually sit in meditation for a few minutes at the end of asanas, but even awareness of our thoughts and reactivity as we flow with the body, as we move with the breath, as we hold postures, knowing that it's a constant practice. Sitting up tall, you might either join the hands together at the heart or place one hand at the heart and one hand at the lower belly with the intention of connecting to your physical body and connecting to what is present internally in your state of mind and being.
Let the act of slowing down the breath encourage a slowing down of momentum. Observing the breath and consciously balancing it. Observing the breath as it moves through the body and consciously allowing space within the physical body as you root down through the sitting bones and lengthen through the center of your spine. Becoming more aware of areas of possible physical holding, tension, stiffness, and perhaps clarifying an intention for this practice, affecting your energetic approach to the physical part. And now deepening the flow of your breath with the lips closed, using what's called ujjayi pranayama or victorious breath. Gently open your eyes and we're gonna start lying down on the floor. So come down to your back with your knees bent and step your feet apart on the ground. Sliding your arms down by your sides close to your rib cage. Slide your feet back until you can almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite. Now spread your weight through the four corners of each foot as you spread the toes. And imagine as though you're hugging a yoga block by the skinniest width between your thighs, encouraging your outer hips to firm towards your midline, maintaining the space between your thighs. And as you ground the shoulders too, breathe in and slowly lift the pelvis, tilting the tailbone upwards towards the space between your knees. Find the height you can lift and hold for five to eight deep breaths. Now, just keeping the arms by your sides here, root down to the outsides of your upper arms and tilt your chin slightly back away from your chest, encouraging openness at your throat as you take deep breaths, encouraging expansion in your lungs. Now feel your feet staying still while you imagine as if you're dragging them towards your glutes to actually activate your glutes and your hamstrings. While you lengthen your thigh bones forward, slightly spiral your inner thighs towards the ground, keeping the thighs parallel. Let's take about two more deep breaths. Feel the sort of circular energy of energetically dragging the heels back, don't actually move them, while lifting the hips and lengthening the fronts of the thighs forward. We're gonna use that again in just a moment. When you're ready, use an exhalation to slowly lower one vertebra at a time. Feeling the pelvis land completely. Just pause and take three deep breaths. If you're feeling any tightness in the lower back, you might like to gently Drop the knees together side to side, massaging into the glutes and the sacrum. Now staying aware of that deep balanced breath, we're gonna change this up just a little bit and awakening our core muscles as well as our legs. So come back to the starting position, feet hips width parallel, and imagine again hugging a skinny block between your thighs. Arms down by your sides, tilt the chin slightly back, opening your throat. And this time, only lift your pelvis halfway up as the range that you can go. Now, as you lift the pelvis halfway up and hold, keep breathing and see that your two knees are in one line, keeping them in one line. Try not to waver the pelvis. Start to lift the right foot off the floor, flex it and extend the right leg forward so the knees stay in one line. Feel the left heel as though it's dragging back towards the glute without actually moving it. That circular energy as before of engaging the glute in the hamstring of the left leg while elongating the tailbone forward towards the space between the knees. So notice the foot is not all the way up towards the ceiling, it's diagonally forward, so the knees stay in one line. Take another breath in. Now careful not to waver the pelvis left and right. Try to keep the two hips balanced and still as you bend the right knee, 
Set the right foot back on the floor. Hips stay lifted. Take a breath in. Then exhale, slowly lower your middle back and lastly your tailbone. And then again, pause, take a few deep breaths. If you like, you can rock the shins again, side to side. <sighs> With that sort of detailed alignment focus, notice if the breath changes, maybe it even gets held. So stay aware of that, those kinds of patterns. As we take side two, start with the feet hips width parallel. Tilt the chin slightly away from your chest. Inhale, lift the pelvis half your range, half the height up and stay there. Keep breathing from the outer hips to still the pelvis as you begin to lift the left foot very slowly off the floor. Flex the foot, extend the leg forward diagonally so that you can see your knees stay in one line. The left knee does not rise higher than the right. Keep breathing, round the backs of your shoulders. Feel the energy of right hamstring engaging by imagining as if you're dragging the right heel towards the glute without actually moving it while lengthening the tailbone forward towards the space between the knees. Take another full breath here, tilting the chin slightly back Broaden the chest, ground the shoulders. Now keeping the hips lifted, very slowly re-bend the left knee. Knees stay on one line, set the left foot down, take a breath in. And with an exhalation, slowly lower one vertebra at a time. <sighs> this time draw your bent knees both into your chest and start to rock in any direction that feels good. You might even like to rock forward and back a few times getting a little more of the middle back and the upper back into this massage. Take a few breaths of rocking and rolling in any direction that feels good until you're ready to come up to sit and we'll come up to all fours, hands and knees. <sighs> so setting the wrists a couple inches in front of the shoulders, set the knees right under your hips and let's begin with a spinal twist. Inhale to raise the right arm up high Exhale to slide it underneath your left bent elbow so the palm faces up and set your right ear all the way down to the floor or on top of a prop. Now notice your two hips. Try to re-level them in that same awareness as we just did in the moving bridge pose so that you're focusing on twisting your spine across your waistline. That's just below your lowest ribs. Breathing in, allow your back ribs to broaden. Breathing out, relax the shoulders away from your neck and continue to twist. Let's take two more deep breaths here and thread the needle. Now at the end of this exhalation, press up to all fours and we'll go right into side two. Inhale, raise your left arm up. Exhale, thread it underneath your right bent elbow and rest the left side of your head all the way down. Use a prop if needed. Leveling out your two hips. Allow the twist to deepen just under your rib cage, right across your waistline. Breathing in, expanding into your upper back. Breathing out, rotating the rib cage, relaxing the shoulders down the back. Let's take two more breaths. And end of this exhalation, lift up to all fours and let's take a few rounds of cat-cow with any variation of the hands. If you're looking for wrist strengthening, you might come up high on your fingertips for it. If you're looking for wrist flexibility, you might turn the fingertips out towards the outer edges of your mat or your knees. And use the inhalations to move into cow, coiling the chest up while rolling the shoulders behind you and down and the exhalations to move into cat, where you round the back by hollowing the belly, contracting the abdomen. Take a few more on your own, just easily flowing to the sound of your breath. If there's any other direction you just need to move while we're here on all fours, feel free to add that a few more breaths.
And as you feel ready, let's meet in downward facing dog. You might like to take a moment to shift around while there, pedaling the feet to warm up the hamstrings and calves. Softly shaking the head and nodding it to release the neck. And feel your way evenly distribute through the entire surface area of each palm. So it feels like you're trying to push the mat away from your feet while lifting the hips as high as you can to feel the full length of your spine, dropping the skull, then broaden the shoulder blades by rotating your triceps or outer upper arms towards the ground. Firm the belly towards the back as you press the fronts of your thigh bones behind you. See that your feet are parallel, at least hips width apart. And now let's hold still for three more deep breaths in Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bending the knees a lot, lift your heels and hips high. Look in front of your hands, take a deep breath. At the end of your exhalation, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward fold. Pressing your legs to the floor, inhale, stretch your spine forward, lifting the chest. Exhale, fold in. Firming down through your feet, inhale, circle your arms overhead to rise tall. Exhale, join your palms together at your heart. Let's take a semi-flow in the first round of a few of Sun Salutation C. Breathe in and raise the arms overhead. Exhale, bow forward. Press your legs to the floor. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Lower your fingertips outside your feet. Exhale, step left knee back into a kneeling lunge. Untucking the back toes with your legs hips width apart. Firm down to your right foot and raise your arms overhead, lifting your spine upright for just a few breaths. Now here, allow your tailbone to lengthen forward towards your inner right heel, lifting your frontal hip bones, lifting your back ribs, draw the shoulder blades down them and wrap your triceps forward as you coil your chest up. Feel the reach through your fingertips and take one more in breath. As you exhale, lower your hands and step into your version of plank pose. Whether the knees are on the ground or your legs are straight, let's take a couple of breaths there. Firming the belly in, gazing at the floor ahead of your hands, starting with shoulders right on top of wrists. If knees are down, it should be right under the hips. With an exhalation, glide forward, bend your elbows back so you feel them graze your side ribs, keeping the sides of your neck long. Try to lower chest and belly at the same time. Pointing the toes firmly against the mat, ground your pubic bone and inhale to cobra, drawing the shoulder heads behind you. Pressing down through your hands, exhale, lift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. Let's take a full cycle of breath through the nose here. Then inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Feel your two hips balance squared. Exhale, lightly step the foot forward inside of your left hand and lower the right knee. Untuck the back toes. With legs hips width apart from down to your left foot and raise your arms to lift your spine. Just a few breaths on this first round. Again, draw your tailbone forward towards your inner left heel. Lift your frontal hip bones and lift the back ribs, pressing the shoulder blades down them. Wrap the triceps forward and coil your chest up, taking one more inhalation. As you exhale, circle your hands to the floor at the top of your mat and step forward to fold. From down to your feet and inhale, rise, reaching the arms overhead to stand. Exhale, trace your thumbs down your midline. All right, second side, let's try continuous flow. Inhale the arms overhead. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, press to lengthen halfway, fingertips down. Exhale, right knee steps back, kneeling lunge. Right away, inhale, raise the arms and coil the chest up. Circle the hands to plank, exhaling from plank to lower forward, then down. 
Inhale into Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, press the mat away and lift the hips to Downward Facing Dog. Pause for one deep breath. Then inhale, raise the right leg behind, squaring your hips. Exhale, step the right foot forward inside of your right hand. Lower the back knee. Inhale, raise the arms and coil the chest up. Circle the hands to the top of the mat. Exhale to step forward and bow. Inhale, rise, arms reaching overhead. Exhale, palms together at the heart. Let's try one more on each side, getting into the groove of your breath. Inhale, your arms up. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Fingertips, exhale, left knee back, kneeling lunge. Raise the arms and chest as you breathe in. Circle the hands to the floor and exhale from plank to lower forward and down. You choose cobra or upward dog as you inhale. Then exhale, lift the hips, downward facing. Pause and take a full breath in and out through the nose. With an inhale, raise the left leg and square your hips. Exhale, step the left foot forward, kneeling lunge. Inhale, raise your arms, coil the chest up. Circle the hands to the floor. Exhale, step forward to bow. Inhale, raise the arms overhead to stand. Exhale, palms together at the heart. Last one. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Fingertips, exhale, right knee, kneeling lunge. Inhale, raise the arms and heart. Exhale from plank, lower forward and down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Pause for one cycle of breath. Hip squared, inhale, raise the right leg. Exhale, step the foot forward, kneeling lunge. Inhale, raise your arms and heart. Circle the hands forward. Exhale, step forward to the top of your mat. Inhale, rise tall, look up towards the sky. Exhale, palms meet at the heart. All right, hopefully we're getting a little warmer. <laughs> Let's turn to face the wide width of your mat and stand in the middle. Now opening your arms wide, step or jump your feet about as wide apart as your wrists, coming into warrior two to start. So from your hips, rotate your legs, pivot your feet so that your left foot becomes your front leg and align your left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot. Make sure that your right leg is slightly turned inward from the hip, the toes follow, and then bend your left knee to stack just on top of the heel. You're turning out the left leg from the hips so the glute wraps slightly under your body. The middle of the knee aligns with the middle toe, straight ahead. Then firm the top of your right thigh bone back and feel the balance of your two hips, the lower belly engaged, and reopen your arms. Wrists stacking above ankles, draw the shoulder blades down your back, and a lift up from the pelvic floor through each vertebra of your spine to your crown. With eyes steady, on one spot, just past your left fingertips. Let's take about five more deep breaths here, grounding in this Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Those of you who are looking for more rigor, especially in the legs, have a wide enough stance where you could bend your left knee 90 degrees directly on top of the heel. Counterbalance the weight by pressing the outer edge of your right foot into the earth so as not to collapse the inner arch. And then feel that your spine is neither leaning way forward towards your front leg, nor reaching way back towards your back leg, but it's centered right between your feet. We've got two more breaths. Preparing for triangle. Straighten both of your legs. If you like, shorten your stance a couple inches to help with balancing and sliding your hips sideways towards the right foot, the back leg. Reach the left hand past your left knee before lowering it down to your left leg. 
or just to the left side of the leg so that you're able to stack your wrists and shoulders in one line. Now feel that left glute again. Make sure it's wrapping underneath you. If you look at your left middle of your left knee, it still lines with the left middle toe straight ahead. If your left hand is outside of your left leg, press the arm and leg against each other and that adds more stability for you to rotate the chest towards the sky. Now feel the energy in your leg so much that if you wanted, you could lift a finger or more of your left hand. We're not collapsing all the weight down through it. And if you wanted even more core rigor for the obliques, you could reach both arms overhead parallel to each other so the palms face each other drawing both hips towards the rear foot, lengthening the top of the head towards the front foot, and, and turning the chest slightly to face the sky. Let's take three more breaths, whatever variation. Is there any gripping somewhere? Maybe in the jaw, in the toes. Last breath here. Root down through your heat. Inhale, rise all the way up. All right, before we go to side two, we're gonna do a little vinyasa flow, standing up. So keep this wide stance and parallel your feet. And with a leg straight, open the arms wide. So this is a nice twist and flow, helps with releasing the spine, the back, mid-back, and stimulating digestion. So breathe in and lengthen the spine. Engage the fronts of the thighs. Breathe out, twist towards your left leg and fold, catching the outer calf or whatever you can reach. Press through the feet and inhale, rise again to center. Exhale, switch, twist and fold, catching the outer leg. Keep going, inhale up. Vinyasa flow, breath led movement. Exhale, twist and fold. Feel stability through the legs, inhale up. Exhale, twist and fold. Try at least two more on each side at your pace of breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Getting the blood flowing. And when you feel like you're done evenly on both sides, then Rotate the legs from the hips and pivot your feet to face the opposite side. Side two of warrior two. So if the right foot is the front leg, align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. Make sure your left leg is slightly turned inward, even the toes. Then bend your right knee to stack, just on top of the heel. Feel the right glute slightly rotate under your body, aligning the middle of the right knee with the middle toe. As you firm the top of your left thigh bone back, aligning your pelvis upright with the lower belly engaged. As you reopen the arms, wrists just above the ankles, imagine lifting through the pelvic floor as you lengthen through the top of your head. If you're looking for more rigor, especially in the legs, have a wide enough stance where you could bend your right knee 90 degrees, but counterbalance by firming down through the outer edge of your left foot, not sinking into the inner arch. And then steady your gaze, steady your breathing, Allow stillness to bring awareness as you mentally scan your body and even your own mind. Last two breaths. Now, as you firm down through your feet, straighten both legs for triangle. You might like to shorten the stance a couple of inches. And with legs straight, quads engaged, fronts of the thighs engaged. Slide your hips sideways towards your rear leg and reach your right hand past your front knee before lowering it onto your leg or just to the outside, the right side of the leg where your arm and leg can press against each other. Feel your wrists and shoulders able to stack in one line while your right glute continues to rotate slightly under your body. Same alignment of middle of knee, middle toe, tracing the midline of your mat. Turning the chest slightly to face the sky, slide the shoulder blades down your back ribs. So as you're turning the chest, there's a little bit of a twist helping to release the mid back here. Triangle is wonderful for opening so many things at the same time in the body all of the back, 
So if you did that extra rigor for the obliques on the first side, reaching the arms overhead, go ahead and add that here, putting a tiny bend in your right knee so as not to collapse into the knee joint. You're engaging the muscles around it. Draw the hips towards the rear leg. Slide the shoulders down the back ribs. Last three breaths, whatever is your choice. Feel relaxation in your face. Spread the toes without gripping the mat. Last breath here. Root down to your feet. Inhale, rise up to stand. All right, let's step up to the top of the mat. I think we're getting a little warmer. Let <laughs> your feet come together to touch so that you can see your big toes together. Your heels might be a sliver apart. And then as you bend your knees, sink your weight back towards your heels, you might even lift the toes. If you're looking for more rigor here, building strength in the legs, graze the ground with your fingertips and try keeping your hips that low. Now only lift your arms up towards overhead, the amount that you could relax the shoulders down and maintain natural space in the neck. We're here for about three more breaths in Utkatasana. If you look down, you want to be able to see your toes because your shin bones are gliding back. But then look forward to broaden the chest and hug the front ribs towards the back, finding a natural curve in your lower spine. Last inhale, maybe sit a little lower. Then shift your weight forward and exhale to fold. Press your legs to the floor, inhale, lengthen halfway. Step back to plank and exhale to lower through Chaturanga. Breathe in from the tops of the feet down into cobra or upward facing dog. Breathe out, lift the belly, draw the tailbone back to downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg while keeping the hips leveled. Pause here. Now remember the first exercise we did in that moving bridge pose where we lifted one leg. Feel that same action of hugging a narrow block between your thighs, keeping the balance of your hips. From the right heel back, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, bend the right knee towards your nose, lifting the navel to lightly step the foot just inside of your right hand and spin the back heel down. Notice your feet are as wide apart as your hips and they're both entirely grounded. While keeping your hips facing forward, bring the arms back by your sides and just lift your belly to hover about two inches off your front thigh. So you're diagonal here. Feel your right outer hip hug in towards the midline of your body as you scissor it back, bending the front knee just over the heel. Feel your outer left heel firm into the earth as you bring the left hip forward. Broaden the chest, look ahead of your mat, take one more breath. Now, if you're looking for more rigor, you could raise the arms overhead here, drawing the shoulder blades down your back. Press to your feet, inhale, rise up all the way to warrior one. Let's take three breaths. Warrior one, feel the squaring of your hips, a slight lift of your frontal hip bones as your tailbone anchors towards the ground. Trace your awareness up your spine as you broaden your chest. Use the entire exhalation to lower from plank into your vinyasa. It could be cat-cow. If you wanna add more rigor, you can lift the right leg as you lower. Inhale to cobra or upward. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Feel your breath. As you re-steady it, imagine hugging that narrow block between your thighs, keeping the balance of your hips. Inhale, raise the left leg behind you, flexing the foot. Pause here. Feel the balance in the hips. Help to balance the length of both sides of your torso, neck, and arms. Take another inhale. Exhale, lift your left knee towards your nose. Imagine you're actually trying to kiss your knee as you hollow the belly. Use that strength in the abdomen to softly land the foot inside of the left hand. With the feet hips width apart, spin the right heel down. Both feet entirely on the ground. Lift the arms back by your sides. Now feel your left outer hip hug in towards the midline of your body as you tack it back, bending the front knee over the heel. Feel the outer right heel pressing into the earth as you bring the right outer hip forward. Belly is hovering off the front thigh as you gaze past the front of your mat, 
opening your chest, relaxing the shoulders. You might raise the arms overhead if you're seeking more rigor, especially in the back. Now press to your feet, inhale, rise all the way up to Vira Vidrasana One, Warrior One. Let's take just a few breaths. Feel now how your shoulders stack above your two hips, how your pelvis is oriented upright, affecting a full length in your spine. Take a deep breath in. Use the entire exhalation to lower from plank into chaturanga or cat cow. If you're looking for more rigor in the vinyasa, lift the left leg as you lower, then press both feet down as you coil the chest up. Let's meet in downward facing dog, this time for a few breaths. Taking a moment to steady a pace in your breath that you could hear and pace the movements of a continuous flow through sun salutation B. Let's take a full round of it. So bend your knees, look in front of your hands, breathe in. Bottom of the exhalation, lift your pelvic floor as you hold the breath to lightly land at the top. Feet touch. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold in. Bend the knees to touch. Inhale, sink your hips low, lean your weight back, arms up in chair. Press through all of your feet and exhale to rise up. So that is one full round. Let's flow through one more. Inhale into chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Step to plank or lightly float back to chaturanga. Whatever vinyasa or not, we'll meet in downward dog. Trying to keep the breath consistent. From downward dog, hip squared, inhale, raise the right leg. Use the belly, exhale, land the foot lightly inside the right hand, spin the back heel down. Inhale, rise all the way up to warrior one. Exhale, lower all the way down into your vinyasa. Otherwise, straight to downward dog. Feel the balance in your breath. Keep the hips squared. Inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, use the belly, land the foot forward, drop the back heel down. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. We'll meet for several breaths in downward facing. Using this pause and momentum as an opportunity to expand awareness. With very bent knees, look in front of your hands. At the end of your exhalation, lightly land the feet to touch. Breathe in to lengthen forward. Breathe out and fold. Knees touch, inhale into chair pose. Let's add a twist here. So join your hands together at your heart. Imagine you're hugging that block and now it's really flat between your thighs because your legs are touching. But the knees stay in one line as you begin to rotate the chest to face the right wall. So feel the twist occurring just at your waistline. The two hips stay level, the two knees stay in one line. If you like, add the leverage of the left arm pressing against the right thigh. Try to keep your heart higher than your hips. Soften the shoulders away from your neck. Give yourself three more deep breaths here. Feeling your strength of willpower and perseverance. Knowing that this too shall pass. Sink the hips a little lower. Inhale back to center in chair. Press down through all of your feet and exhale to rise up. Release the arms. Take a deep inhale through your nose. Open your mouth wide, lion's breath, stick out the tongue. Smooth the breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Side two, feet touch, knees touch, sit low, chair pose. Join your hands at your heart, breathe in, feel your legs firming into your midline. 
Breathe out, begin to turn your chest to face the left wall. Isolating the twist at the waistline, sink the hips lower than your heart. If you like, add the leverage of the right arm against the left thigh. Shoulder blades down the back ribs. Observe here, is there any unnecessary gripping starting to happen? Whether in thoughts or physical action, last three breaths. Allowing ourselves to loosen any unnecessary grip through our consciousness. Sink down to your hips, inhale back to chair pose. Press to your feet, exhale to rise up. Ah, Navasana. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Bend your right elbow against your right waist so the right palm is face up like a little teapot and then draw your tailbone downward towards your inner left heel. Firm the lower belly against the back and lift the frontal hip bone slightly. Now feel your weight on your left foot. Spread it out through spread toes and inner and outer heel. Engage the front of your left thigh, solid in that left leg. Bend your right knee against the left knee and continue to draw the tailbone downward. With your right palm, catch the inside, if possible, of your right ankle or foot. If it's not possible, it might be easier to catch the outer right foot. As you begin to kick the right leg straight behind you, maintain the two hips facing forward. Sometimes that right hip will want to turn right, but keep facing it forward and pull your right foot or leg as well. So you feel the counteractions like a bow and arrow, helping you to balance as you lift the heart, tilt the torso slightly forward, raising the left arm, and keep drawing the right hip forward. Feel the expansion of your chest as you breathe. Soften the shoulders down away from your neck. Let's take two more breaths here in dancer pose, Natarajasana. Not only are we opening the heart space, front of the shoulders, coiling the chest, but lengthening into the front of the right thigh and hip. Slowly reverse the stages and step the right foot next to the left, grounding tall in mountain pose. Take a deep breath in, open the mouth again, stick out the tongue. Slow the breath down through your nose. It helps when you're trying to balance to steady your eyes on something that's not moving that will help to keep your spine aligned. So something maybe on the floor ahead of you can help. So place your right hand on your right hip, spread your weight through the four corners of your right foot, engage the front right thigh, your quadricep. Draw the tailbone downward towards your inner right heel, feel the lower belly engage, your center. Bend the left knee, turning the left palm face up. See if you can reach for the inside of the inner ankle or the foot. Otherwise, the outer left foot is fine. Now bring the left hip forward, just like warrior one squaring the hips. Kick the left leg straight behind you as you pull the foot towards you, using those counteractions as you tilt the torso forward to catch you and balance as you raise the right arm, coiling the chest up. The more you kick the left leg back and the more you pull it, you help to balance as you're extending the heart forward, relaxing the shoulders down. Let's take three more breaths here. Deep breath in, slowly step the left foot to meet the right. <sighs> so step your feet apart a little wider than hips distance as we prepare for a squat. You can either sit all the way down to the floor in which you would then just splay the feet as wide as necessary like this. You might be sitting on a prop. For some of you, it might feel comfortable to hover the pelvis off the floor. Any of these variations, they're great for stimulating digestion as well as opening the hips. Then use your arms to help splay the inner thighs apart. Ground down to your pelvis. Maybe join the hands at the heart and lift your heart, lift the spine. Draw the shoulders back and down. Into your belly, take a slow breath in for five, four, three, 
two, one. The out through your nose, five, four, three, two, one. Again, inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Take one more cycle on your own. Keep grounding down through the pelvis, lifting up through the spine, relaxing the shoulders down. From here, let's lower the pelvis if it's not already on the ground and extend your right leg forward, flexing the foot. With a left hand behind your pelvis on the floor, use the right hand to cross in front of your left shin and catch the outside of your left foot, flexing it too. As you root down through both sitting bones, lift the spine tall, feel the lower belly engage, and begin to straighten the left leg forward to any amount that you can keep your spine upright and the shoulders relaxed. Breathe in here, then begin to backstroke the left arm straight behind you off the floor, and exhale to twist to the left. Looking towards the left fingertips, breathe in, press down into the earth with all of your body touching it and lengthen the spine upright. Breathe out, continue to turn the rib cage while softening the shoulder blades down your back. Let's take two more deep breaths. Then inhale, look forward. Keep engaging the lower belly, keep lifting the left leg, raise both arms up and overhead like a one-legged boat pose. Breathe in, exhale three, relax the shoulders. Inhale, lift the heart, exhale two. One more breath in, firm the front of your left thigh. Exhale very slowly, lower the left leg straight on the floor. Nice, set your right hand behind your pelvis, bend your right knee and flex the foot too. Cross the left hand to catch your outer right foot and begin to press the foot forward to whatever degree you can straighten the leg while lifting the spine and relaxing the shoulders. Root down into the floor, breathe in, lift the crown, back stroke the right arm, exhale, rotate the chest. Inhale, root down, sit taller, exhale, continue to rotate the chest. Maybe looking back at your right hand, last couple more breaths. Bringing out the mid back a little bit more here. Now gaze forward, keep flexing both feet, keep lifting the right leg, lift both arms overhead. Imagine lifting your pelvic floor. Deep breath in, lengthen the spine, exhale three. Inhale, curl up the corners of the mouth, exhale two. Take another deep breath, exhale very slowly, lower the right leg. So we're about to stretch into the fronts of the thighs. We've been engaging the quads quite a bit. I'm gonna take us into supine um, hero's pose, which looks somewhat like this. There's different variations. Start to lean back here. If you have knee issues, here's an alternative. We do this one quite often from Sphinx pose. You backstroke one arm and you catch one leg and you bring it towards the outer hip. Just make sure that you root the pubic bone down and you keep the knees no wider than hips width. If you're doing that, take about five to 10 breaths per leg on your own. Otherwise, to come into supine hero's pose, start by sitting on your calves, knees close together, toes pointing back, tops of the feet on the ground. And if you, you can, start to lean back like this. If possible, you go a little further and you roll the calves aside, open up the feet, and you sit on the ground between them or you sit on a prop in between them. Try to make sure your pinky toenails stay grounded. It just helps to align the knees. The knees no wider apart than hips distance. Then you place the hands behind the pelvis and you think of drawing the tailbone forward towards the space between your knees. So as not to overarch the lower back, you wanna lengthen it. And starting to lean back, taking a few breaths. We'll be here for about a minute whatever degree that you're leaning back, think of rooting your knees towards the ground. 
lengthening the fronts of your thighs forward. Lifting your frontal hip bones towards the bottom front ribs. If you eventually make it down all the way onto your back and that feels fine, no compression in the lower back, you could also catch hold of opposite elbows overhead, giving your shoulders a stretch as well, the sides of the torso a stretch. So keep breathing consciously, deeply. got about five more breaths here. Now, if you are in the supine hero's pose, Supta Virasana, take your time coming up, press your hands onto the floor, few breaths to lift the spine upright. <clears throat> Let's meet on hands and knees so we can just release space into the backs of the knees. So once you're on all fours, tuck your right toes behind you, straightening the right leg on the floor, and just press the right heel back as you keep extending the chest forward. You might also feel a stretch in your calf, and if you want a deeper stretch in the calf, you can raise the left leg and use the top of your left foot to draw the right heel further back behind you as you keep your shoulders above your wrists. Let's switch sides. Set the right knee on the ground, tuck the left toes behind and straighten the left leg on the floor. Either stay here or if you want a deeper calf stretch, we're really focusing on opening the back of the knee. But if you do want the calf stretch, pick up the right foot, use the top of the foot to draw the left heel back. Keep extending the chest forward. And then once you're ready to bring both legs to the ground, slide them in front of you and straighten both legs. Separate your feet hips width, flex your feet. Well, look who's awake and press your big toe mounds forward. Ground your sitting bones, raise your arms, relax the shoulders and extend the chest forward as you bow. Crawling the hands down the backs of your legs, maybe holding a strap or clasping your big toes. Now allow your shoulder blades to slide down your back ribs as you slightly lift the chest like a baby cobra pose. Open your throat, lengthen the back of your neck, and lengthen all of your spine as you fold for just two more breaths, opening up all of the back side of your body. And with your next inhalation, lifting from the chest, rise up slowly. Exhaling to lower all the way down onto your back. And as you come down to the floor, add one last posture or movement before we relax in stillness for a few minutes of Shavasana. Whether you'd like to come into a brief shoulder stand, lift your legs up the wall, happy baby, begin to wind down into corpse pose find a comfortable position to rest your body in and once there close your eyes scan from the soles of your feet gradually 
to the crown of your head, giving all of your body muscles permission to soften and rest. Feeling the ground, supporting your body. Feeling the breath gently flow. Slowly start to move your head, your fingers, your hands, your toes. Ease into a gentle stretch. Bending the knees towards your chest. You might like to turn over to your right side, transitioning slowly up to sit. Grounding in two minutes of meditation. So as you sit, feel the alignment of your physical body 
supporting alertness, supporting relaxation. Allow your breath to flow naturally and I invite you to tune in to something that you can steady your awareness on, whether it's the feeling of your breathing, a distant subtle sound that's consistent, maybe in the music or in your background, or perhaps you're gazing at an object just in front of you, softening the gaze. So in the steady focus, you can observe what may shift in your mind. Let's begin. Breathe in, breathe out, joining your palms at your heart and bowing in. Let's seal our practice together with one ohm. Take a deep breath. to the light in you. Namaste.